Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Simon here. I've got a bit of a different video, um, but one I'm excited to bring you nonetheless. It's something I've never done before in the entire eight, nine years I've been on YouTube, both this channel and my main channel. Um, and it's it's with good reason. I've always been hesitant to do product reviews because it's not what I got into YouTube for. I've had plenty of offers to collaborate or to be sent things to review, and it's just never really been something that has tickled my fancy. But... A couple of weeks back, a company called Damien Saber got in touch and said, Simon, we would like to send you one of our lightsabers for you to review on your channel. And after, you know, asking them a few questions, doing a bit of research into the company, finding out that, you know, most of the reviews are positive um, and the fact that they agreed that I could be completely open, honest and transparent, I thought I'd give it a go. And there's a couple of reasons. One is because I have never actually, in all my life, owned a movie quality lightsaber prop. I had plastic lightsabers as a kid, you know, the ones that you like, you know, flicked open, um, but they were just plastic and cheap. I've never actually had a metal electronic lightsaber um, before, and that was kind of like a really good opportunity for me. Also, they offered to send me my all-time favorite lightsaber, which is the Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi lightsaber. So I thought, you know what? This company seems to have a decent reputation. They have agreed that I can be honest and open. Um, and also, you know, obviously they've sent me this for free. So just for transparency's sake, um, I did get this lightsaber for free, but there was no money exchanged. I'm not going to make any money from any sales going forward. It is just a straight up, uh, product review where they've provided the product and I am, you know, doing the review. So keeping that in mind, the fact that I've not owned a lightsaber before, my knowledge on build quality or comparisons to other sabers is going to be limited. But what I can do is give you, firstly, a frank and honest opinion as to what I think of the actual saber itself. But I also do know quite a bit about the lightsaber um from return of the jedi so i'll i'll give you a few uh snippets of information as we go along um i did get the package a bit earlier i unboxed it so i had to get it all open and got the bits and bobs out but everything seemed fairly simple okay so you can see exactly what we're dealing with here and this is more or less how everything came out of the box um we have the led blade which is i believe the longest blade that they offer it is a little bit long for my preference um it does make it feel a little bit awkward especially in the enclosed space that i'm in they do offer shorter led blades um but this is the biggest one they do i think this is 36 inches um that is quite you know clear what that is when it comes out of the box you have the hilt itself, which I'll get onto in a second, but you've got the product manual, which goes through almost everything except for some of the smaller bits and what they are actually for. So this was the thing that really confused me the most because I wasn't entirely sure if it was part of the blade itself um, or if it was something else. But this is actually just for if you want to display the saber without the blade. You can pop it in the top here. And this essentially, when you turn it on, stops the light blinding people if you accidentally point it in their face. I think it's called a plug. Uh, there is a stand that comes along with this, which I haven't fully opened yet. Uh, but you can put it on display if you don't want to go, you know, throwing it around like a, a man-child would, which is what I definitely plan to do with it. Um, and there is a little bit of, uh, not necessarily construction needed, but when you do affix the blade, because it is a little loose... You do get provided with this hex key, which on the emitter itself, there are four small little screws that you can use this to tighten the blade in place. It's very simple. Um, it's not difficult at all to assemble. Um, and like I say, it's pretty much ready to go from the box, which is always nice because, you know, the last thing you need is something to come along in pieces and you don't know exactly what it is that you've got to do with it. So in terms of its first arrival, Absolutely fine getting everything out and understanding what everything is. Now, when we look at the emitter itself, the actual lightsaber hilt, this is pretty accurate to the movie itself. It's not fully accurate. Um, you know, if I'm going to give it some praise, I would definitely say that firstly, the actual build quality of it, the feel of it is very impressive. It's sturdy. 
You can see the chrome material. It was much, much shinier uh, before I put my hands on it. There's a few smudge marks already, um, but I like to think that that gives it a bit of a lived in look, which, you know, it would do. Um, the dimensions seem to be fairly accurate. The little circular um, rings here uh, seem to be the right thickness. Sometimes I've seen with some of the blades, they don't quite get these correct. Where it is a little off is just in some of the colorings. So, for example, on the control box here, um, it probably doesn't show up as well on camera just because of the reflection. The, uh, the brass coloring is probably not as intensive as it is on um, the actual saber. And the same with this bit just under the hilt here. Um, it's a bit lighter, I think, than the actual movie version of the prop. But more or less, and, and obviously, you know, there's not necessarily all of these you know, screws at the top. Not that there isn't, you know, screws and bricks in Star Wars. We know that there is. Um, but this overall is a fairly, fairly good approximation of the lightsaber itself. And like I say, this is my absolute favorite design. Um, I don't know why. It's never really, you know, struck me as anything more than just being my favorite. And I think it's because Return of the Jedi is the film that I value most. Um, it's the film I connect with the most. And this is just, again, that unique lightsaber that we, we got to see. You know, everything had been blue. And then this comes along and it's a beautiful green saber. Although it wasn't at first, uh, but we'll get into that. A little bit of history on this design, actually. Um, this is basically Alec Guinness's lightsaber. And in the actual movie itself, the prop, it was the original from A New Hope. Um, just re designed and rebuilt slightly which is why again the emitter itself up the top looks almost exactly the same as Obi-Wan's lightsaber. Mark Hamill was reunited with the original prop a while back and he said that um, the emitter itself spun. It was able to spin and there'd be a wire going off of the bottom connected to a battery pack so that whenever the blade was supposed to be on because this was, you know, 40, 50 years ago, technology isn't what it is today. What they would do is they would put the wooden stick in the top and cover it in a reflective material. And then when you turned it on, the blade would spin and the material would reflect back the light. And that is what allowed the, um, the uh, folks at ILM to create the lightsaber effect. And that's why when you look at the movie itself, uh, depending on the angle that Alec Guinness holds it, sometimes it doesn't appear as bright or it seems to dim completely because the light doesn't reflect on it the same. So again, the very original concept for the lightsaber was much more practical. Um, and, you know, the saber that Luke has in Return of the Jedi was actually the original from uh, A New Hope for Alec Guinness. So an interesting bit of trivia there, but it is why it looks fairly similar. Obviously, the canon reason is that Luke was using spare parts from Obi-Wan's hut. So that's why it looked fairly similar. So in terms of, you know, the overall look, very, very happy with it. Um, just in terms of practicalities for it, to charge the lightsaber, you just simply unscrew the uh, bottom here. Now, be careful with the clip here, the triangular clip, that it's not up against the chrome silver here because otherwise it's going to scratch when you unlock it so you just unscrew this here do, do, do. and then eventually you'll see there is a usb charging port here and you do get the usb charger along with it it is just i think a usual usb c i think is it it says 6A. I don't know if 6A is that. I'm no good with USB connectors anyway. Um, so that's where you charge it. Um, you can disassemble this as well if there is any issues with it or if you want to make modifications. There are instructions on how to do that. Obviously, I'm not going to do that myself. Now, the only other um, bit that you need to know about the Sabre itself, other than you know how to put in the blade, is the control panel. This here is where you activate and control the lightsaber um, outside of the app. Now, at first, I assumed that you opened this and used it that way, but it's clear to me now it's not. And this is why I wanted to have a little play around with it beforehand. If you, you can remove the actual control box lid, but you don't want to because firstly, underneath this side is a spring 
So if you remove that, the spring bounces out. This button as well, which is the uh, control button, is not fixed in. If you turn it upside down, it's going to fall out. So originally, when I did this and it fell out like that, I thought I got a faulty saber. I thought, oh no, it's it's faulty. This this was clearly supposed to be glued in, and it's not. It's disappointing, but it's not you know it's not a terrible thing because I can just put the cover over and it'll be fine. However, I've come to learn that actually you're not supposed to take the cover off whatsoever because you can just press over it. So, as I say, you don't need the blade in to activate it, and to activate it, you just need to, uh, I think you hold down the button, which you can do here. Power on. So you get the power on message by holding it down. That gets it into a standby mode. Um, and there's different things that you can do depending on whether it's on or not. You can adjust the volume, you can adjust the mode. Um, when it is turned on, you can obviously change the color. Um, there are some preset um, options on there, but if you hold it, standard mode. There we go, standard mode, and then press, and the saber is now on. Um, obviously, I don't have the hilt in. I'll put that in in a second. But there are different things that you can control from this point of view. Um, as I say, it is a bit loud when you turn it on. You can control the volume both by holding the button down for a couple of seconds. Or, well, that was too long. I turned it off. But if you hold it down for a couple of seconds, it will adjust the volume for you. Um, so, so far, very, very impressed. Because, again, this is just this is just me. I, again, I don't know a lot about other Sabre companies. I can't compare it to anything else. But for my first impressions, I was delighted with this. Just because it does feel sturdy. It feels great in a grip, you know. It feels it feels good to hold. So that's, that's really encouraging. Um, to actually plug in the saber, um, it does fit in straight up, but it does feel a bit loose at first if you uh, if you actually don't tighten up the the bolts here. So there are four little screws here that you can just turn and screw up, and that makes sure that the blade itself doesn't come flying off when you're doing all of your fancy twirls which I have yet to learn how to do any twirls. So that is now secured in there. You can see it's fairly stable. And if I now turn this on... Unstable. Okay, I don't want unstable. Let's change the mode. Standard mode. Standard mode. Unstable is like Kylo Ren's cracked kyber crystal. It's got loads of different modes. It's quite cool. Um, and the sound quality is good as well. It, it, it is fairly accurate to the sound that you get in the movie. So if I just press the button... So that's kind of like the unstable mode here. So if I turn it off and then change the mode. Pulse. So you can pulse. Steady. Steady. So if I turn it on now, it's steady, you can see. And it is red at the moment. If I hold down for a second, color change. it will let me change the color. It will cycle through different colors. So I'm going to wait for green. Color selected. So you just press it again to select the color. Now, the colour's probably not going to come up very well on screen here. So, I'm going to change to the main camera. So, you can see here, um, again, the colour is probably not going to show brilliantly just because I've got a lot of lights on me at the moment. But it is quite vibrant. Um, quite vibrant and green. Now, whenever you swing it, it does make the, the noise of a lightsaber, you know, when you swing it around. Now this is again where things come into play because you can press the button for different effects. If you tap it once, you get a blaster bolt deflection. And it flashes as well. See, that sounds pretty good. I think if you hold it down, it uh, it does a... You know, like if you're clashing the lightsaber. So if you're clashing it with another lightsaber. There we go. You just tap it to, to send it back to normal. Um, and like I say, these are the basic uh, kind of controls that are just on the lightsaber itself. There is an app that you can use that gives you a whole host of functionality. So I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. And then we're going to switch over to uh, the app itself. Like I say, because this is quite long... You know, it is something that I struggle to uh, to control in such a confined space. Um, but I'll, I'll get up in a minute and show you just how big it is. That's what she said. Um, okay, so 
So the app itself is called Xeno Configurator. You can see it here. I'll probably put up a screen record as well of it, um, just so that you get an idea as to what it's like. But once you've connected it to Bluetooth, it's very simple. You just turn on the Bluetooth, hold it close, and you press the connect button. You've now got everything that you need. You can tap the Kyber Crystal in the middle to turn it on. See there? Tap it to turn it off. And you've got all kinds of different preset modes. So down here you've got the Dark Emperor. The Protector. Wanderer. The Knight. And they are all different modes that are preset. Um, you don't have to use them. You can, up here, uh, pick a colour palette and change the colour to anything that you want. So if we go with a kind of light blue, um, we'll see if that works. And you can see there that it's come up with the... The light blue. When it's on as well, you can also toggle some of these different effects. So, you've got the force light. You've got the blaster light. Uh, you've got the flash on clash. Uh, locked up, which is again clashing with another lightsaber. And the drag effect. So that's pretty good from the perspective of the different modes that you can have. Um, it also gives you the battery life um, and you know there's obviously different settings that you can have as well. The volume control down at the bottom is quite useful because it gives you the ability to change. Level, yeah. So it's either 100% or 50% if you just do it from the Sabre, but you can actually choose a lower level. You can also put music on as well. If you upload a music clip, you know, it can play the music. So if you want to dance around to Duel of Fates whilst you're doing that, then you can. That's the app itself. It's really easy to use. It's very accessible. Um, and, you know, it's pretty much as is with the Sabre. You know, again, the, the quality of it is pretty good. It's easy to understand. And I say that as someone coming into the this the first time, um, having never used a lightsaber before, um, as I say, there was a little bit of awkwardness just trying to figure out what some of the pieces were at the beginning, um, you know, but nothing that I couldn't figure out myself. And I'm a, a fairly clueless person at the end of the day. Um, the build quality seems to be pretty fantastic. But again, you know, I would need to be using this uh, quite often over the next few months to really know how sturdy it is. But it's balanced really well. So it is something that, you know, again... The blade has got a bit of heft to it, so it definitely does affect the balance, um, but not to the point where you feel like the blade is guiding you rather than you guiding the blade. Um, and, you know, I think that the look of it is fantastic. You know, it's it just it puts a smile on my face just from the fact that I know it's Luke Sabre. Um, another reason why I think I like it is because, as I imagined, it's quite comfortable to grip. Some of the Sabre hilts, I look and I think, that can't be comfortable. Like Anakin Saber, it's got the plastic black bits that stick out, and I think you know, even if it's plastic, it can't or rubber, it can't be that comfortable. This is perfect because you've got your your thumb on the control panel, you can have a two-handed grip, um, and and it just feels great in you know in your hands. Um, that's what she said. So you know, overall, very pleased. Like I say, if I was getting this myself, um, you know, I'd probably pick the shorter blade because you know if I just come back here a little bit you know you can see here just how long it actually is um but I'm very impressed I know the blue isn't uh the, the traditional saber color but again I do some twirls but it's too big you know and, and I don't want to hit Zuko who's right down there um you know it's kind of like I'm just going to hit things. So I'll practice. I'll practice and I'll come back. I'll practice with this. I'll come back and show you how many like twirls I can do with it. Um, but like I say, it is a pretty decently uh, accurate model. It looks great. Uh, the build quality seems to be good. The materials are good. Um, as I say, just don't get confused with the control panel because that's what happened to me. I got confused and thought this was supposed to come off. Um, and then when the button fell out, I thought, oh no, it's it's one of those, it's a bit of a dud. But actually, no, I've not been able to find any issues with the build quality other than just that. It just it just takes some intuition to actually figure out what 
you know you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do um, everything else seems to be fairly simple and like I say if you want you've got a stand to put up the actual lightsaber if you don't want to use the the blade um, and another little bit of trivia as I'm sure most of you know but the original blade was supposed to be blue for this lightsaber but because in Return of the Jedi uh, the blue was sort of mixing into the background in Jabba's barge with the blue sky they changed it to green that's why the lightsaber was green um, and you can see the originals, and also you can see the original deleted scene of Luke cr creating this lightsaber in the cave on Tatooine. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting. So, overall, very impressed. Like I say, um, Davian Sabers, they do offer a number of different lightsabers. Um, as I say, they've even got some of the Acolyte ones up at the moment. So, by all means, please do go check them out. As I say, there's a 5% discount code in the uh, description. So if you want, go and grab a lightsaber, um, you know, save yourself a bit of money. And as far as I can tell, these are pretty decent quality. I can't attest to every single one, but if they're like this, I'm pretty sure you'll be very happy. The sounds are great. The feel of it is great. The build is great. The look is great. I'm a very happy boy because now I get my uh, favorite childhood lightsaber. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm very thankful. So um Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Um, if you've actually, you know, had a Damien Saber before, feel free to leave your uh, your own kind of review in the, the uh, comments. Or if you've got any Sabers from anyone else um, that you're able to maybe compare it to, by all means, leave a, uh, a comment there. Uh, let me know as well what's your favourite lightsaber hilt, because, you know, this is mine. So, in the meantime, thank you for watching. I'll see you for the next video.